Hello and welcome to my retro watches. This episode is completely unplanned. It's going to be off the cuff and impromptu because I've been trying to do a bit of a sort out on my bench, been through some of my drawers, some of my containers. These are all the projects that I have accumulated over the last few years, some of which I intend or intended to bring to the channel, some of which are just for my own personal collection. Some might just be parts watches. Thought it might be a bit interesting. I could kind of talk to you a little bit about how I've acquired these and where I find them um, and show you them really. But I will look at some movements perhaps and uh, see what's interesting. And of course you can then comment below on perhaps which ones you'd like to see in future episodes. So talking of future episodes, uh, I have put a post in the community tab, which a lot of my loyal subscribers have seen. But if you've not seen, uh, I do have something to, to quickly discuss on a personal note. Um, it's not particularly easy for me, and perhaps you might want to skip this if you don't want to listen to it, uh, but I'm trying also to create some awareness. So I've had some bad news on the medical front. Uh, I've, for one, got a femoral hernia, which has been causing me some trouble not being able to sit at the bench for too long sometimes because it creates pain. But there was also something else going on in the background that I've now been diagnosed with. And it's not nice because I have been diagnosed with prostate cancer and I'm, well, two months or a month off being 50. So a bit of a shock. Well, it's a very much of a shock. And for the last four weeks, I've been trying to deal with that uh, from a psychological point of view. And that's why there's been no videos uploaded to the channel because I've obviously got my mind on other things. Uh, the good news, at least for me now, is there seems to be a cure and that cure is by way of surgery. For me, uh, they use a robotic assisted surgery. It looks very science fiction and they're going to go into my abdomen and they're going to remove my entire prostrate completely along with the cancer because they feel that the cancer is confined just to my prostrate. Um, so that's going to be pretty tricky. That's going to happen potentially in September and something else that I've got to look forward to. It is going to leave me with some uh, difficulties in recovery and perhaps well, almost certainly there's going to be some long term issues. But the main thing is I'm going to be still around. I've caught this well early as in it hasn't escaped the prostrate. So in line with that, um, I in most of my videos now on, certainly because this is going to be a choice subject for me, I want to spread awareness. Look, I'm nearly 50. A lot of you guys, according to the analytics, watch my channel are between 40 and 70. This only affects men. It is the biggest cancer in men. It can also be the biggest killer in men. I personally have absolutely no symptoms at all. So it is a bit of a silent killer. I went to the doctors for something else. I asked for a blood test. I saw a, a, an advertisement. Well, I heard a, a campaign on the radio, actually, uh, making awareness uh, about a thing called a PSA test, which is a blood test. I was having a blood test anyway at the doctors. I asked them to tick the box for the PSA, which they did. My PSA came back high and the rest is history, so to speak. So for you people out there, get a PSA test done regularly. It will save your life. If you get a higher PSA reading, please don't think that you've got cancer necessarily. It is just showing that there might be something going on uh, in your prostate. There are other things that can happen. In my situation, I believe the uh, the percentage was 75% um, chance it was not going to be cancer. So I'm, I am unfortunate. Um, but if I can get just one of you out there taking a test because what I've said kind of feels like I'm doing something positive for all the negative things that I've got to go through. Uh, so I don't want to dwell on it too much. Maybe I'll make some more videos as I go through my treatment. Maybe you want to see how I'm progressing. Maybe I blog about it. I don't know at this moment in time. It depends if you guys would actually want to watch that. Um, but yeah, so go have your PSA checked have it checked regular at least once a year or once every couple of years. If you've got a baseline and it's always nice and low, terrific. If there's a spike, you catch it early. Sometimes with this particular cancer, you can live your whole life with it and not have to worry about it at all. And they just monitor you or you've got surgery or you've got radiation and so on and so forth. So please 
look after yourselves and uh, don't have the surprise that I've had. Um, so there will be videos coming. I've already prepared some uh, stuff for um, reviews and things like that. So at least I can post if I'm not feeling well enough to sit here because this, apart from my family, which obviously comes first, they're gonna be the most important to me. Um, but this is my massive hobby. This is my escapism. I love coming to this bench. I love fixing watches. It takes me away from my job and everything else. And I want to get back to here. This is a focus for me, for my healing, that as soon as I can sit here and work, whether it's filming or just working on my own, I will feel a lot better and it can help me with my well-being and my psychology. So I'm hoping not to be off the camera for too long, but you never know. One last thing, because I know I'm just waffling now, really. Um, the, the Seiko Bullhead. So I've set myself a target to try and rebuild that before I go to surgery. Uh, it's a focus I've got. I, I was setting up to record it and I had to clear my desk and then this came about. So, OK, I'm going to leave some timestamps just in case you want to skip this. So we're going to cut to the bench. and I'm going to talk you through the, the many, many watch projects that seem to be lying here. So here we are looking down on quite a few of the projects. Um, one or two you have actually seen before. And I think it was trying to think what year it was now. Was it 2020 or 2021 where I did uh, projects I was going to do this year? So there's still a couple remaining from that, but I've acquired quite a few more since. Uh, it's also possibly a video that uh, hopefully my wife doesn't watch because then she finds out what I've been spending my money on, really. <laughs> but there we go. So there's a whole array of things in front of me. Um, and I'm going to start off with actually my latest purchase, which is this particular watch here. Now I'm going to try and see if you can see that. It's got a faceted crystal. However, what's so cool about this, it's actually acrylic. And the top here is just domed so the facets themselves are on the inside now i've seen this before actually or i've done one of these before but it was a seiko this is a rico and uh, it looks quite cool actually i have to say it's going to be from the 70s i would expect and i bought that just this weekend at the watch fair in birmingham in the uk and i think i pay because i bought it with some other things think this watch was around 30 pounds now it does run uh it just doesn't run very well and this i am dying and i mean dying to bring to the channel i think it's going to be good fun uh, it's right up my street it's very retro uh it's got an interesting little movement in there from rico as well so that i intend to come to the channel very very soon um so what else can we look at so i've got two really nice named watches first one is this one here of course this is an omega seamaster now this sadly is not actually my watch uh, it's a friend of mine called geno uh, he sent me a whole bunch of watches over two years ago now and he's a bit of a dealer of vintage watches and he sent me a load of broken watches that i could bring to the channel and try and repair uh, with no time limits and this is one of them uh, and eventually i will bring this one to the channel i'm not the massive fan of omega movements i have to say but equally we'll take the back off this one seeing as it's loose and i'll try and offer that up to the camera there as you can see that is a lovely lovely looking movement I and mean, that's the one thing about omega to me is they look really really nice I'm just trying to see if i can find my piece of pegwood but i haven't got it uh, they look very very nice uh, because they are very nice let's face it uh, they've just got such fine tolerances that parts do fail on them and when the parts fail because of what i would say is the cartel from the swiss you can't get the parts for reasonable money this is the next one it's also from geno and this is a zenith a very nice zenith it is too this also featured in my older video it has a bit of an interesting dial but there's also some tarnish to it and i've never worked on a zenith before 
and probably that's why it's still here because I've been apprehensive and I have not got round to doing it but I will do I do promise you that so um, onwards and upwards I have got I'm just going to shuffle them around a little bit so here I have three Acuris now if you're not familiar with Acuris it was a British manufacturer um, or a British brand should we say they used usually Swiss movements and I've acquired these usually in job lots so I do like buying job lots of watches on eBay and that's a good place to find projects certainly if you're starting out in this hobby and you want to find fairly nice watches to work on um, or nice movements to work on you can't really go too far on with an accurist now I showed this many years ago because it's been kicking around ever since uh, it doesn't look much uh, and that is because it isn't much really the dial has had it there's a lot of things that have had it on this particular watch but if I turn it over and turn it round just look at that movement that movement is to me absolutely gorgeous and it's going to clean up really well I think on this one from memory when I looked at it there may be a broken balance staff but in many respects it wasn't really worth trying to fix due to the poor condition of that dial but I'll just move it to one side I got this one uh, actually sent to me from a friend um, Alan Symes uh, he just sent me some watches that he didn't need I think he got them himself uh, in, in a job lot and lo and behold I just need to take the case back off What do we find in here? Another absolutely stunning movement. I mean, I just love that sort of colour. I can't tell you what it is off the top of my head. I think actually, well, I, I tell a lie. I think this one is, um, oh, I can't remember. Is it Pessieu? Begins with P. I'm sure that's the maker's mark on that one. A delightful little movement you'd probably pick this up a watch like this on eBay without um, a lie you might pay 10 20 pounds at the most uh, you can it'll be gold plated this on this particular one the gold hasn't worn off uh, just trying to hold it better to the camera for you you know it's got the date compl complication as well but you get that lovely movement to work on and that would give you a lot of pleasure to see that tick again. Certainly would me, anyway. So that leaves this one here. This is the last Acurist. And this Acurist, along with this little Oris, and somewhere here, so I've got this Rotary as well. I bought these at the weekend at the watch fair in Birmingham, and the guy charged me five pounds. So five pounds for the three watches all have got problems. Now the rotary I think is a bit too far gone. Sure if my camera can focus on that or not. Let's try the other camera. So you can see here it actually says rotary junior, so it's obviously a child's or a you know young person's watch, and it's pretty much had it. Uh, it has got a movement inside. And that would give you, you know, for five pounds, that's going to give you loads of pleasure trying to repair that one. The Oris, Oris is interesting. He told me it's a balance problem. I haven't looked to see. Uh, the only trouble is it's got some circular staining on the dial, which I don't particularly like. I don't know how it's got there. It's almost like someone's tried to put it in a round case, hasn't it? Which is probably not what's happened. And it's plated and you can see the back there. Is ruined but again if you are just getting into this hobby you could buy that and you could try and repair at least take it apart what's it cost you it's cost you no money whatsoever has it so then it leaves the other accurist and I've had a little look at this one because this is quite interesting um, it actually works so if I I'm working the wrong way around here so I've put some wine into it you can see there that it's 
uh, ticking away. But it's really interesting. It ticks and ticks and ticks and ticks. And the uh, minute hand hardly moves at all. I mean, literally, I think to get it to one o'clock from 12 o'clock, it took nearly a whole day. So something's really strange there. If I pull the crown, the hands turn perfectly. The guy told me the problem was the, the date never changes. And he's correcting that. The date doesn't change at all. Um, but I'm sure that's an easy fix. I'm just more perplexed as to why the uh, minute hand certainly and the hour hand aren't moving. So there's obviously a whole bunch of problems on the dial side in the uh, motion works there. So that could be a video. I don't know. The crown is also too long, which suggests that perhaps it might even be the wrong crown. Um, or sorry, the wrong stem. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, moving on. My smallest watch. Can I even get that focus in the camera? Probably not. Uh, this is the, and I've never known how to pronounce it. Is it Favre Lubia? Um, <laughs> if I've got that wrong, I do apologize. Perhaps I'll put a photo of this watch up. And the reason I'm interested in this, I've never done many ladies watches. And in many respects, I could get this going and no one would ever wear it. My wife certainly wouldn't wear it. But it has an absolutely beautiful, tiny, tiny movement. And funny enough, I took a photo of this, I don't know, 18 months ago, and it turned into my desktop wallpaper on my laptop. So I've been staring at this movement for quite a long time now, and um, I see a little bit of dirt in there on the photo, actually, and it really drives me to repair it. It'd be good to try and do this on camera. I think my lens could probably cope with that, um, but it's going to be really, really difficult. But so cool at the same time, because it's so small. Uh, what else we got? Um, probably not the flavour of the month, uh, but this watch here is a Seconda. And obviously Seconda originated in Russia or USSR, I can't recall. And we know how the world feels about what's going on over there. And I'm not going to get involved in that at all. But this is a really nice watch. And the reason for that is, is because it is the deluxe version. Um, not only has it got a nice dial, very, very thin case. These, and I repaired one for somebody else a while ago. And I'll show you. So I'm just going to pop the back off. Again, this has an absolutely superb movement on it. I'm trying to use two cameras here. None of them want to focus. So there we go. It's a really tricky, well, not really tricky movement particularly, but it's an interesting movement nevertheless. And then you've got, you know, all these all these wheels here look to transfer the wind into the mainspring. Really, really interesting how it's set up. It's actually fully wound, as you can see, and it's not running at all. Uh, but a simple service on that one, I think, is all it's going to take. And I had intended to bring this to the channel. Uh, I do like to show you uh, on video, I've never really said this, affordable watches. So it's all about trying to get people into the hobby. You know, this watch... Honestly, I can't remember where I picked it up. It might have been in a job lot, but I would not have paid more than £10 for. Uh, because the secret thing is, people don't know about this Seconda Deluxe and having this lovely movement in. It's a friend of mine called Clive, who came to the... Well, he always comes to the watch fairs with me. And uh, I pulled out one of these from a pile uh, two or three fairs ago. I told him, I said, you should buy that. That'd be really good. I can't recall what he paid. He paid maybe five, ten pounds, that was all. And he was also equally amazed by what lay beneath. So again, it's just showing you that things can be very, very cheap, but equally very rewarding. I mean, I have another Seconda here. Uh, this is another, so it's a 16 joule movement. You know, it possibly works, this one. Yes, there we go, it's ticking. Uh, nice. Interesting, plain looking, well, interesting and plain, is that the right thing? Dress watch. Uh, I'm not sure about the movement on this. Well, there we go, look, so. Not too bad either, you know, that will keep you entertained for a little while. Cost very little money. 
uh, but it's satisfying to repair nevertheless. So the desk is looking a bit uh, tidier at the moment, but there are loads and loads and loads to go through. Um, but I'll just skip through some of them for now. I have a, a, a nice uh, Lanco here. Uh, I've already done a video of a Lanco, if you remember. This one, uh, again, I think this came to me from a friend called Nick, who often sends me just piles of watches that he no longer wants to use or to play with. Uh, trying to see if I can get into this one. Okay, so the back is cracked off. And we have another nice little movement in there. It doesn't work, but it looks pretty clean. And again, hours of fun trying to get that to go. I used to recommend a lot, well, I still do to people, when people say to me uh, on Facebook or, or wherever I'm hanging out at the time, you know, what watch is good to start with if you're just getting into this hobby. And I always used to say Seiko's because I've got lots of videos of Seiko's um, and I do find Seiko's still a very, very good watch to start on because the parts are plentiful. Uh, but equally, if you picked up something like this one, I forgot the name of these, is it uh, Abilene? I can't read it uh, from my eyesight here. This was a watch fair find, this was £10. I mean, look at that dial, it's got texture, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, but it's got no day-date complica complication. It's going to have a decent movement inside it, a good joule count. What are we, John? It says 25 joules on that one. So not that joules mean everything, but they certainly make it easier to, to fit plates and things like that. So when you're starting out, if you're buying a 17 joule watch or uh, something like that, you can't really go too far wrong because if you try something with two or three joules or even one joule uh, watches, which are out there, they're going to cause you a few problems um, and not really incentivize you further down the field. This watch I had intended on bringing to the channel. Um, I really do think it's a lovely, wonderful thing. Again, let's just take the back off and have a quick look inside. And there we are. So. Just conscious that the light isn't so good, is it, on these movement uh, shots. But it's already trying to run. And then I've got a magpie outside who uh, is making a heck of a lot of noise. So this particular movement is an AS. Uh, AS 1361N. And that I hope at some point to bring to the channel. It's also a contender for if I get ever chance, uh, certainly once I've got um, better, I want to do a few giveaways. My daughter's dying to get back on eBay, uh, on eBay, on YouTube, and perhaps this might be something suitable for a giveaway. So we've got the last four here before we hit uh, what I'm going to call Seiko Corner. And... Um, Start with this one here. This again typically is another watch fair find, but it was a cracking find. I'll try and offer it up better to the camera. So, this is yet another Invicta, and it's a handsome thing. It's got a bit too much patina potentially on the dial, but uh, I'm taken with these vintage Invictas purely because of the modern. Uh, incarnation of this brand uh, I find quite vulgar at times and this is from their heyday look at that the uh, <laughs> bezels just fell off uh, so it needs a lot of work on this it's also got radium all over the dial I think so it's uh, equally quite hold nice and thin and I believe from memory this also has an AS movement in it so let's have a quick uh, look at that and yes, indeed, I think that is. Excuse the dazzle. So this one, again, could be something I uh, decide to bring to the channel uh, in time. And um, yeah, it could be a good one. 
And the next one is this, and this is a, if I'm saying it right, a Sevretti. I don't know this brand, it has featured already on the channel. It was on that, uh, again, that other video I did a couple of years ago. It doesn't look too much. It's got this nice, or what was originally quite a nice bezel, um, but that's all faded. You can see, hopefully, without too much dazzle, which we're getting, um, you know, the crystals cracked and everything else. But there was a, another surprise on this, and guess where? In the case back, because this, you, know, you don't even need a dial when you have a movement that looks like that. It's absolutely stunning. I think from memory it's an ETA. It looks like an ETA because you've got these double rotors, uh, du double wheels here. Um, but yes, that, and it's gold, isn't it? It's really nice, rich gold colour. Absolutely superb. And that one I'm definitely going to enjoy. Sorry about all the reflection here. That's the trouble. They're too bright, aren't they? And the lighting's not good enough. But that one I'm definitely going to enjoy uh, doing. Uh, this one, I've not heard of this brand. It's called, it's from Holland, I believe. And it's a Van Andel, I think, Rotterdam. And there that one is. It's a very small watch. Uh, same principle though, you can see, the, you know, this is a typical style of perhaps the 60s and sometimes in the 70s as well. Small dress watches, uh, no complications to them at all. And again, you can pick these up for not a lot of money. And they're going to give you some experience and some fun. Looks like a very generic movement in there but clean nevertheless and the more of these you service and work on the less frightening they become because they all seem to follow a set pattern and for somebody like myself nowadays with a no day day complication uh, they don't offer too much of a challenge at all of course taking them from a broken watch to a running watch is always very very satisfying um, but you know once you start doing these you get a really good taste for where things go and then the last one before Seiko's is this one and this I don't know when I'm going to do this because this is another citizen and hopefully a lot of you have seen my citizen video this is the other one I said I got no, this is the citizen uh, crystal seven and uh, on the face of it, it looks good needs a new crystal uh, it's almost like a got pipan dial from the um, Omega days. Uh, but when you open the back, as I will now, this movement looks very, very familiar. And this could be another movement of springs. Now, do I want to do another movement of springs on YouTube? I'm sure you guys might want to see it. Um, certainly see me shake again but I am not so sure it is also missing the crown and the stem which may I don't know yet present a challenge to uh, get that part before I can repair it so let's discuss my problem uh, with Seiko um, I've got far too many of them already and these are projects still to do and these a lot of these were bought in the era probably 2018 to maybe 2021 uh, I pick them up as I go along when I see them I'm like a magpie in that sense uh, but these are from the days where you could buy you know retro looking Seikos for no money so some of these I'd have paid as little as £10 for maybe a bit more and nowadays when you're on eBay they do seem to be quite a bit more. So I'm not going to go through them in the same manner because a lot of them have the same movements and things, but you can get an idea of some of the more interesting uh, shapes. So this particular one here uh, is extremely, extremely retro. Um, look at that. That's You've got to be bold to wear one of these. Now, I've actually got this uh, in blue. 
uh, complete with the original bracelet and uh, it looks fantastic it doesn't wear always that great on the wrist but what a statement and i picked this up and again not a lot of money and i've been looking ever since to see if i can find an original bracelet for it but i can't uh, this is dated from 1975 so i'm going to go through some more at random I have this one here, and this has uh, an interesting lug size. So this is only 10 millimeters lugs. And you can find those bracelets. I think I've got some here actually, uh, but you can get them from um, Speed Timer Collection on the internet. He has a good selection of old Seiko bracelets. And this is a good era. So again, this is 70s. This one is 60, uh, sorry, 76. And they put this sort of striping I don't know how they do it. It catches the light and you get this two-tone effect. And I've got quite a few Seikos like that and I really do enjoy them. This has also got the Roman numeral uh, day wheel. So it does have English as well. Let's see if it actually works because sometimes they don't. Yeah, so there we go. I've changed it to English. I prefer the Roman numerals. I think it looks pretty cool. So that one's to be done. But again, I've already got one exactly the same. Uh, Another more, probably a tamer version of a Seiko. Seiko 5, uh, oval dial, uh, 1973, I think. Uh, cracked crystal. So I've got to find, these are all acrylic, but I've got to find that one in order to repair that. It might work. Yeah, give it a quick shake, and lo and behold, off it goes ticking. Uh, more interesting ones, I have a plethora of these. Uh, so I've got lots of these that I've restored already. I absolutely love these TV style watches. I bought loads and loads of them from Adrian at Vintage Time Australia way back, probably 2017 maybe. Um, he runs the uh, wrist, watchy, wrist watch forum online. And I got to know him through there. That's where I actually cut my teeth uh, learning how to repair watches. And he got a job, lot of loads of retro Seikos, shipped them over to me for a fee from Australia. And some of them I still haven't done. But I have every flavour. These, they made in all the different models. So from the 6119, 6309, uh, 6106 uh, DX hacking movements. Uh, these are just two, uh, five versions. We have a 74. And I think that was a 77. Sorry, I'm off the camera. So 74 is the brown, 77 is the blue. I have an all but complete watch here. This is in really, really good condition for its age. Uh, I don't know what to do with it. I bought this really just to fix up and sell, to be honest with you, to try and make a bit of money. Um, and again, what are we looking at? 1976. So I have a thing for retro Seikos. And in part, I think that started because they were so cheap when I got into this and I could fix these for fairly little money. And if it didn't matter if I scrapped them. Uh, this is a more recent purchase and it is in real poor condition. Might be on repair, I don't know. If you've been around the channel long enough, and by long enough, I mean quite a few years, I restored one of these, I think it was the 5,000 giveaway. Uh, it was in much worse condition than this. I did 12 videos on it, and I took it from this to as good as new condition as I could get. Uh, I gave it away to a subscriber, a guy called Adrian, and he's uh, become a real big support of the channel he's also on my facebook group and posts literally daily so he's definitely got the bug uh, this came up and i had to buy it because i like the one i did for him so much that um i wanted one for myself uh, but here it's lay and i still <laughs> haven't done it um quickly flick through um a few more so i've got a seiko lm so this is a bit more complicated movements but nicer movements on it classic seiko some fancy sort of lug work there uh, very nice watch and eventually i will get around to doing that one i also have this other lm and again i've had this for too too long it is a brown dialed watch i just realized i was holding it upside down 
and um, it needs a lot of work. Uh, apparently it doesn't work very well. Uh, I think it has the problem with the star gear that there's plastic in there that's broken, but it's all original. It's on its original Seiko uh, mesh bracelet, which you really just don't see very often. Again, had it years and uh, it will go eventually. I mean, ironically, it still has the remains of the sticker that it would have come on when it was brand new. Uh, what else? This one. So this one uh, is, oh God, honestly, this one's so old. I really sort of was interested in it at the time. Now I'm not too sure because I think it is a little bit too out there. Um, but again, it's going to have a service at some point in time. It's got a cracked crystal. Maybe you can see that. So that might be fun to find. Give it a bit of a polish up and it will look nice. And that one is actually from my uh, birth year. So that's a 1972. That's possibly why I bought it actually. Uh, it's been so long. Uh, what else have we got? Got this very nice looking one here. And this uh, is in really, really good condition. Uh, again, for its age. Interesting uh, indices on there. Uh, you don't see indices like that anymore. Um, I've actually got this one that I've restored already in brown. And I saw this one in blue. Thought I have to have it. Uh, we are looking at, I think, 1970. Yes, 1978 for that one. Uh, rattling, kill carry on rattling through them. This one, uh, another watch fair find. I God, I think I paid £10 for this, that's all. Uh, I thought I got a bargain until I got home, and then I realised that it looked to me... I'll just try and see if I can get it to show you. So down here, you've got that sort of funny silver mark, and then you've got another one up here. They're dial feet. So someone's been messing around with the dial feet on this, and it's affected the dial. But it's got its you know original bracelet and everything else. Nice little project one day, or I'll flip it as it is and let somebody else do it. It's a 6309 in there, and that is from 1976. Uh, getting down to the last few now, guys. Um, another big sort of cushion dial Seiko here. Uh, very fancy, very nice. However, someone has decided to have a go at engraving, and they've put some... Interesting engraving, engraving, that's not even a word, um, around the outside there, which is terrible, let's face it. It's terrible. It's on a bracelet that doesn't belong to the watch. Um, and I need to polish that out, don't I? I need to make justice on this particular model. I'm trying to think which one it is. I can't see this one very well. So it's suggesting it's a, a, a 1971 or it could be an 81 actually but there we go that's that will be good i've had that absolute years as well this has got a nice blue dial on it um it's almost a little bit tiso isn't it and it's a funny uh, sloped and integrated bracelet like that um lovely iridescent dial i think this one actually runs yeah, just needs a new crystal, quick service, good to go. It'll either be a keeper or it'll be a seller. It's a 6119 and it's from 1976. Uh, like I say, some of these I do to uh, sell really, just to make a bit of pocket money. And as the prices are going up, uh, why not? So I'm now down to the final few. This, I've already got this one. Uh, there's a story behind this. I actually bought this for my cousin. So I have a cousin called Matthew and he's been watching with interest what I'm up to. He fancied one of these. I found one, uh, bought it, but it's been vandalized. The dial, uh, sorry, the, the case has lost its charm. Uh, it's not supposed to be polished either. It's supposed to be sort of starburst brushing on the top there. Um, so as that's gone, I didn't have the heart to repair it and sell it to him like that because it doesn't look very good. Um, it's a classic one, a 7006-5000. That's the model number on that one. And that was from 
1974 and that's probably why I bought it as well because 1974 is his birth year uh, so there we go um, another quite a big Seiko with a blue dial I like this one I don't think the crystal is original it's a really really battered um, but you can see it's got some quite nice indices in there and I think once that's got a new crystal, had a bit of a polish up, uh, that will look really, really, really nice. Uh, 1977, 6319 movement. So some of my favourite ones now. So I'm going to hold this one up. This uh, you may have seen already before. This is my uh, Seiko Skyline. And these are quite old. These are from the 60s. They're really thin. Um, and they usually came with quite a, a funky bracelet to go with this really interesting shaped case. Now I picked this one up from a seller on eBay in the Philippines. Uh, it's got, I wouldn't say it's appreciated um, patina on the dial. It's neglect patina, but I think it's going to come up quite well. I've actually bought another one since, which is in far worse condition, but I've bought it for the parts in the movement because I needed the, the stem and the crown for one and the other one has the stem and the crown. So uh, look out for that. This one was definitely going to come to the channel at some point. It's a hand winding Seiko and I don't think I've done a hand sight hand winding Seiko on the channel. Uh, three more Seikos to go. Why not? Let's show you them all. Seiko Actus. Um, you don't see you don't see many of these so much anymore. These are lovely. I've already got this in green, but not as an actus. No, I have got it as an actus. What am I talking about? Pick this up again, <laughs> surprisingly, for not a lot of money. Crystal's been melted, uh, but I'm confident I'll be able to polish that out uh, with some sandpaper and then poly watch to get it nice. Uh, the movement will need some work. Uh, these quite often have very stuck case backs because this is a ring goes around the outside and you unscrew that and then the whole thing comes out to so the crown and the, the whole case back is enclosed if you like um, so it's a bit more involved it's really scratched on the back so it probably indicates that it is already stuck but I've got special tools to crack that one open and this was another one that intended to be repaired and sold on so my favorite two I've left till last so I have this one and this, uh, I love these. I've already made one for myself and um, they're a Seiko, I'm gonna call them a fake or a faux diver because they're not a dive watch. They just look like a dive watch. They have a bezel uh, that normally rotates. This one is extremely stiff. Uh, they'll rotate, they don't click. It rotates both directions. Has this rather large crown, which is not screw down crown at all. Um, they usually have gold dials. Well, they have different colour dials, but the gold one's the, 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 the one that most people go for. So, and the movement's completely seized on this. So they turn the crown, it will not move the hands at all. Uh, the movement's a 6309 from memory. Yeah, so it's a 6309 8360 is the model number. And they come up really nice. So, I've managed to get uh, an aftermarket bezel insert, which is correct. I've actually got a new aftermarket dial to go on this which is a sort of a silvery color i've got to figure out what to do with the chaptering in there so i'm hoping to perhaps take that out sand it down and maybe spray it or something to, to match the dial this one potentially uh, is channel fodder uh, hopefully because uh, they do come out really really nice and they're quite sought after people do go a little bit crazy for a good one of these uh, when i've seen them so finally got this one in tape because this is a digital watch it's actually an Anna Digi and once again I've got this watch already however I didn't bring it down to um, to show you just check the tape off the tape is holding the case back on uh, so it has this sort of almost like a robot face I suppose it has that what looks like a speaker uh, it is a speaker actually to amplify the sound of the alarm but it's still quite weak uh, these are really, really cool watches, but the screen is absolutely prone to uh, rainbowing over the years. And I've the one I've already got, 
I've had for quite a few years and it was in good condition when I bought it but it's now the screen's gone rainbow and this came up uh, I've had it on a save save search on eBay for years this one came up as a buy it now for I don't know what I paid it wasn't a lot 30 pounds or something and I snapped it up and the seller said it works fine but he couldn't get the case back on uh, after taking it off for a battery change and that would be right because the case back on these is you need a press so if you've got a watch press you'll snap that back on so i've done really really well because these things are sought after they go for pretty good money for a digital watch so i was very very lucky to get this and i've actually got a new old stock screen as well so i probably might bring this to the channel i've serviced my own before and it's quite interesting, the mechanics uh, for the Anadigi, uh, well, for the analog side. So perhaps, again, in time, that will be on camera. So that's all of my projects, or nearly all of my projects. I've just noticed I didn't, I didn't even show this. You can't really see it. This is a Doxa. It's probably a 1940s Doxa, something like that. Uh, so might do that one. But that's all of the projects that I can find. There are a few more scattered around, to be honest with you. Um, and that's it. So I really do hope you uh, enjoyed my little insight. I'm just throwing everything on the floor now uh, into the madness that is watch collecting. I wanted to show you one last thing, more of a plea of help. So this is a digital watch. I've got another one here, the same hold these up to this camera so these are a very early Casio Tron and this one is a Tiso and the Tiso was just under license it used exactly the same module as the Casio here a lovely bracelet now these are really really early digitals and as such were expensive these were some of the first Casios and the quality of the bracelet and the case and everything else is superb. However, trying to find a working module has been the bane of my life. This watch is my longest ever project and I will have had this since probably 2018 and I look constantly to try and find one that's affordable that I can buy with the module that's working or at least potentially might be working. One of these is completely melted and the other one has cracked. The module itself or the board is made from ceramic so it's not a plastic board and the ceramic boards break because people try to put the wrong size battery in them. Uh, which is such a shame because you know I really want to get one of these going. So if you have one that's uh, maybe battered but working and you don't want it anymore let me know. I could cut you a deal um, as long as you don't want really, really silly money for it because I'm dying to get this off my bench and onto my wrist. OK, that's the end of the video. I've managed to tidy all the watches away by uh, basically just opening the drawer and pouring them all back in where they came from. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like. Everybody hit the like button, please, because that is going to tell the algorithm that this video is worth watching and this channel is worth watching and more people will come and get hooked into the world of watches. Uh, so yes, also please leave your comments, tell me your favorite watches, tell me your least favorite watches, uh, which ones you'd like to see on the channel and uh, which ones um, you wouldn't like to see on the channel perhaps, I don't know. Uh, other than that, I know that some of you might wanna wish me well or perhaps you're stuck, you don't know what to say. Don't worry, I've got a great family, I've got lots of friends, I've got lots of support for what's going on personally in my life. And you guys have already offered me a lot of support in that particular uh, um, comment that I put up in the community tab. And I can't thank you all enough. Uh, with you guys and my family and my hobby, I hope to bounce back very quickly from what I've got to go through. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, I'll keep you all posted on that one. As I say, like, subscribe, comment. Uh, join the Facebook group, Retro and Vintage Watches and Restorations. You'll see me in there. And check out my Instagram as well, which is my retro watches. I try and post something nearly every day if I can. Usually just what I'm watching or uh, something like that. Uh, so see you in the next video very soon. Hopefully that is going to be the uh, Seiko Bullhead. You never know. I might try and start the Rico as well because I'm really, really itching to have a look inside this one. 
So there we go. Bye for now. See you in the next video. Ta-da.